What's up everyone? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Welcome to my YouTube channel if it's your first time. My name is Courtney Capano and I'm so excited to have you here. <music> video as you can see in the title is finding your home decor style or how to even start that process whether you are currently looking to restyle the home that you have the apartment you have whatever it is or you're buying a new home going into a new apartment and you just want to refresh I just recently moved into our first house my husband and I so I have been doing a lot of home decor research and shopping and just different ways of finding inspiration and, and styles that I want to bring into my home. And so I have been really discovering what my home decor style is and I think that a lot of people when they're you know styling their home, working through their interior decor, it's so easy to look at pictures and say okay i love that i want that and then just like mirror it getting so caught up on trends and i just think it's so important to first figure out like how are you going to create a space that is a reflection of you in a place that you feel like safe in a place that you feel inspired and creative and just cozy and i just think it's so important to have your interior design be just a reflection of who you are as a person and I don't know I do think that's all really important so I'm gonna talk about how that can come to fruition in your home and for you and how I've learned to create a space it's just you know me and my husband and it's not just a copy of a picture I've seen on Pinterest that being said I am also going to offer some of my favorite interior design tips and tricks I just love that when I look at my home I know that it's not the same as someone else's like I didn't just go out and buy everything at Target and put it all together you know like I just think it's so important to be creative in your space and find pieces and put them together in a creative way so I'm going to just jump right in and I also want to mention that this video and these tips can help you even if you're just you know looking to refresh a room in your home or a space in your home it doesn't have to be your whole house that you're refreshing at one time um but i think every room or space area in your home should make you happy and should be well thought out um and so that's just my two cents there first whether you are designing a home space whatever it is i think that the first step before actually shopping is to browse around right obviously but browse around whether you go to stores um home decor designer stores home goods wherever you want to go that has pieces of interior decor that you can just start to see what are you drawn to what is attracting you not just wow you know i like that piece but something that makes you feel something like i could see that in my home like that would bring me joy that would make me happy that's my style and so that's what i did i just started to browse on websites on pinterest pinterest is a little dangerous though because there are images that are already cultivated rooms or cultivated spaces that don't allow you to necessarily be creative and just look at one piece and say okay i could put this vase in this way and it came from my own brain you know on Pinterest they're just designing everything for you beforehand which is great but I think to start it's so important to just see what pieces of decor you are drawn to whether you are into vision boards like putting together a vision board of images and pieces and color palettes that's another whole thing start to see what kind of color palette you're drawn to are you neutral are you eclectic like all of that can be such an important part of your process at the beginning. Again, I, I just feel like it's so easy to go on these Instagram pages also, not even just Pinterest, of these designers and just see spaces that you just try to mirror um, instead of bringing your own creativity to the table, if that makes sense. So first step for me is just like, creating a vision board either in your mind or actually on your computer and just start to see what you're drawn to. So once you kind of have an idea, right, you have a foundation, I think it's important to really do what you can to stick to it. Because even for me, right, if again, if you've seen my other videos, if you haven't, I'm very neutral. My room is a little bit more bohemian. Um, my living space, living room, kitchen is, is definitely more modern, organic, a lot of earthy elements, neutral colors, but I'm still drawn to really vibrant rooms at times. And I'm really drawn to even some co 
coastal themed homes. I'm like, wow, that's so beautiful. And I could see myself saying, you know, I want these pieces because I love them. And, and I didn't because I knew the overall, I knew the foundation that I had was what I wanted most, even though I was drawn to these other styles. So just a, a tip there, once you take that initial step to designing a space or home, like stick to what your gut knows is like what you want, you know? So eventually you're going to start shopping, right? You're going to want to go out and start buying pieces to make this vision come to light. And so I just have a few tips for this point too. So once we get through the vision, the foundation, all that good stuff. Now we're at the point where we're going to start shopping, right? We're going to buy pieces that are going to bring your vision to life. And this is a huge part of the process. It's uh, arguably the most important. And so I just have a few thoughts that I'm offering here. And I think number one is you don't want your space to look like a Target showroom, right? Or a West Elm showroom, Pottery Barn showroom, whatever it is. You don't want your space to look like a picture you've seen. And maybe you do, and honestly, that's that's great too. Most likely, it's not going to be a true reflection of you because you didn't create that space. Someone else did. And if you just copy it, there's going to be a hundred other people that have the same space in their home too. So it's just, my advice is that when you go out and start shopping, don't buy a bunch of the same items at one place, right? For example, home, your bedroom. The biggest no-no for me, and I'm sorry if you have this and, and you love it, um, is like matching furniture. When your nightstand matches your headboard and when every piece of furniture in one room is the same style, like that is not an experience it's not giving you visual interest it's just a cohesive matching bedroom set and i just think most likely when you buy those matching sets they're going to be really expensive anyway and it just isn't something that i think is going to give you that sense of home that like we all want it's just gonna feel like a showroom and I'm using bedroom as an example it can be the same thing in your living room getting end tables that match your coffee table like all the same set if you really look into high-end designers and just interior designers anyway you never see matching sets. so that being said right definitely go to all of these different stores and shop arounds again online or in person and just focus on pieces try not to focus on sets things that are all the same you know think about having elements of color and fabric and just design that are different that complement each other which i know can be hard and not everybody is great at at picturing a space while you're shopping for items to go in that space like i know that's not an easy thing but i, I promise you you can do it if you just take the time to let yourself be inspired by items and be creative with those items and not just buy 15 items or 15 pieces of furniture that just look the same. So that's just a piece of advice there. So my personal favorite way to make sure that I don't have a lot of pieces from the same line at Target. I keep saying Target, but I do love Target's home decor, but I limit myself. You know, a lot of times when you're buying certain products from one line at Target or any store um, by one designer, if you have too much of that designer, it just is gonna give you that monotonous, like, basic look in your home. So try to just limit the amount of times you purchase from a designer. Go thrifting. Thrifting is the best way to shop, to be honest, because you're always going to have something unique, right, when you're thrifting. And look up other YouTubers that have done thrifting hauls. I can't wait to do some soon. I think that it's the best way to really go into a space and let yourself be creative because everything is unique when you thrift. Um, and so just a random thought that's coming to my brain here with interior design because I just think that having a unique space is so important and you definitely get that when you thrift. You can still achieve that unique home that is you by shopping at bigger name stores, um, just not overdoing it. Similar to thrifting, like Home Goods is definitely a place that you can find such unique pieces that, you know, there's not often the same pieces at Home Goods time after time. No, there definitely is a lot of times items that they um, continue to sell that are similar, but you're more likely to get fresh new 
items in home decor pieces um, by shopping at home goods than some of the other big brands i don't know i think another thought that kept coming into my mind as i was designing my home and i was in the process of buying items was that i wanted my home to mimic a feeling like i wanted each room to have a certain feeling to it and I achieved that by letting myself being drawn to certain pieces that were giving me that feeling like for my living room I just wanted coziness I wanted inviting I wanted earthiness I wanted neutrals and I just let myself only bring pieces into that space that felt like that and so I don't know just like a thought so at this point of trying to discover what you want to bring into your home it's also important to take inventory of what you have currently so even if you're moving or you're redesigning really really pay attention to what you have and if it gives you that feeling that you're trying to create in your home if it gives you that style if it is going to take away from what you know you want a space to be it's okay to part ways with it even if it's beautiful even if it made you happy before but it's just not going to fit the mold of what you're going for i think that's a huge piece that people get stuck on is not selling or donating pieces that are in their home that they loved for so long but are just not growing with them. For me that was really difficult but it feels good when you get rid. It's like the Marie Kondo. Um, what is that called? It's her whole concept of like does something bring you joy. Like I really feel like that is not just important with your clothing but it's also so important with your home. So another thought that comes to mind and something that was big for me when I was designing my space is I wanted to incorporate my life into my space and especially my fashion sense and i've seen interior designers talk about this and so i definitely was inspired by some other people that talk about you know taking notice of your clothing and clothing that you wear often from colors to textures to your style are you vibrant are you more relaxed with your clothing are you someone that seeks attention when you style your clothes or do you just want to blend in like all of those things can help you so much with your home decor so for me with style i have always since i was in high school loved putting clothes together and outfits together that genuinely like did not make sense a lot of times um but worked for me and I have always said to my friends that have literally told me I like what you wear but I just wouldn't choose that for myself but it looks good and and I've always liked that because it's again that visual interest and that moment that people notice that's just my personality and that's just who I am I'm definitely not subtle I'm not a subtle person by any means I just love making a statement in a pretty subtle way um, but a statement nonetheless I don't know I just I think that your home should be a reflection of you so start to really look at your clothing and when I say clothing I guess I say that because it's the first thing that comes to mind as your own form of expression um, so just think of any ways that you express yourself and bring that to your home too and express yourself in a similar way that has really helped me and also if you're a really quiet reserved person but you want an eclectic bright vibrant home like absolutely go for that um, because I think that means anyways you're probably more extroverted than you think and you like being a little loud and so it's been a cool experience for me to really look at my means of expression and bringing that into my home that all being said I think something else to just keep in mind at this point as you start shopping around is to not rush I am impulsive and I'm like preaching to the choir right now because I definitely rushed at the beginning and luckily it worked out because I took the time to have a whole process before I started buying but once I started buying I was rushing I was excited and I just truly think that there's no reason to rush I know that you want to create your vision bring it to light but take your time and if anything focus on one room at a time that way it gets all the attention it deserves and you know one room doesn't overshadow another every room deserves to have its moment if you end up rushing don't beat yourself up because I know I got to a point where I was like slow down just take a breather similar to don't rush 
um, don't be impulsive, which I think is is definitely on that same playing field. Um, if you're not rushing, don't be impulsive either. Really what comes to mind for me with being impulsive is trend. And I think if you couldn't tell, um, I don't like doing things that everyone else is doing in their home. I want to be creative and be myself. So I have tried so hard to stay away from trends and it's so easy. I just think like, I don't know why this just came to my mind, but you know that arch that you see on like TikTok, people are painting that arch behind doorways and fireplaces and it's beautiful. It's so cool, but that's paint that is probably not that style is not going to be in for very long and everyone's doing it now that me personally like i'm just grateful i didn't do something like that because i don't want anything in my home that's just what everybody else is doing right now and seems a little trendy and i'm sorry like if you have that they're so cute and there's so many ways to make it unique for sure so something else that comes to mind too is wallpaper we've recently put up an accent wall in our office because i was just in there i mean i have a nine to five i'm in that office some days like nine hours straight and i wanted a fun moment in there i don't know i wanted one wall to just be unique and fun and vibrant and so i well me and jonathan put up a peel and stick wallpaper wall that was like a hundred dollars on wayfair it's black and white polka dots and it is super cute i'll put a little picture of it right here um and it came out really fun but it's peel and stick i'm gonna get rid of it within the year i'm sure and it's definitely something that's loud that I wouldn't want to be permanent. Like I would never have done that with real paint because it's trendy and it's a moment and it's not forever. So just think about what you're doing when you're shopping. Don't be impulsive and don't invest a lot of money and time into a trend. Just a tip. So I did look at some of my notes because I'm like, okay, am I even covering all the things that I wanted to cover? And I think I did good um, at going through kind of somewhat of a timeline process with home decor but i do want to offer some of my favorite tips that i have just learned along the way whether it was from family things i've seen online or things i've just discovered myself so i really made it clear but just to echo everything i've said you know number one is just don't copy um but be inspired there's just so many ways that you can make a space you so try your best not to copy but just be inspired next is always 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 bring big artwork or big focal points to a space and really i mean i'm saying for my bedroom right i don't have any big art i do want on this wall some big art eventually big art just elevates a space i mean for us with this home too it is our first home it is a ranch it's pretty small um but like in our living room which i'll put a picture again right here so you can see we have a big art piece it's a sarah brook that just elevated the room the second we put it up it really draws you in it's the first thing that you see when you enter the room and i think i really just believe it elevated the space and made it a little bit more luxurious you know i like that i think that it's just important to have big art in a space don't be afraid of the size of an item in your home either that's another thing i don't think i have this on my list but i when i was shopping around even for like our bar stools we have these um like rattan woven bar stools that maybe i'll put a picture here i'm just like inserting pictures of my home so you can see i am doing a home tour soon i'm still waiting on a few more pieces again taking my time we're doing the backyard over so i want to include that um so i will be showing all of these pieces eventually but anyways those bar stools are really big and i was nervous about that but it just elevates the room you know when you buy pieces that are big it's not going to make the room look small if anything it's just going to make you feel like you're in um, a bigger space and so so that's just a piece of advice too is don't be afraid of big art and big pieces in your home because it does just take it to that next level, I think. So another tip is to really lean into your color palette. And so, like we talked about at the very beginning, establishing a color palette is going to be important because I think it is easy to, again, be drawn to things outside of your original vision that you end up having pieces and colors that are just like, it's too much, it's too much. So lean into your color palette and really, you know, instead of being attracted to things outside of the colors you initially wanted look at different tones you know if you're really into um earthy colors look at a muted 
pop of like orange rust to incorporate or like a muted yellow um, that gives you a little bit of leniency with your color palette but is still neutral if that makes sense like for me with this room I wanted neutrals but I did want to incorporate like you can't really see but I have two blankets here that are um, rusty dusty pink colors and they just I don't know they just made sense for for the colors I was going for for in this room and so lean into your color palette don't stray too much but definitely dabble in tones that work with um, the colors you've you've picked and this is another fun tip that I learned when designing if you are having curtains in your home which if you can tell in here we don't have curtains we just have shades I personally just like the look of just shades in the home but I think eventually when we have you know a bigger house and a bigger space I will definitely put curtains up and so the advice or the tip is that when you are aligning your curtains or putting up your curtains and you have the bar, have the bar in line with the ceiling as opposed to right above the window. So I'll put a picture over here that I will get off Google or something, but essentially the thought is that if your curtain bar and curtains are in line with the ceiling, it's going to make your windows look bigger. It's going to make your room look bigger. It makes a huge difference, I'm telling you right now. So another tip with home decor is just to mix textures. I just can't tell you how much I notice a difference when I go into someone's home and I can tell they've taken you know, a risk with mixing textures. And it's exciting and it's fun to have things, again, going back to my style with throwing things together that are interesting and maybe not what someone would think to do, but it works. Like that's how I feel with textures. And so mix in rattan and wood and metals, that industrial chic look can look good incorporated into any style. In your pillows, have your pillows all have a different texture. And to have that make sense, like everything should feel different when you touch it. Like I love looking around a space and knowing the way everything would feel if I was to like graze my hand on it and have it all be different because that's cozy. That's exciting. I'll put a picture up here of what I mean. I'll try to find some um, designers that have really done this well. I love when you can, you know, experience a room and it gives you that feeling of depth and I think different textures do that and so um, keep that in mind and it's the same with decor pieces you know getting woven baskets for example I know a lot of people are doing that now and there's so many different ways to style them and that gives you that rattan look and feel and again bringing in just other elements that are just exciting and, and interesting and then lastly I've said this in other videos and I just want to say again here that my style is modern organic and it basically means to bring earthy elements into your home but I really feel that you should always bring earthy elements into your home whether you are nautical in your home decor style or eclectic like I've mentioned before or bohemian or really formal and you like those silver glass tones and that glamour style that's all fun but there are always ways that you can incorporate earthiness whether it's a plant whether it is just elements that you would traditionally find outside that you can bring in i personally just think that as human beings like we need that in our homes especially spaces in our homes that we are in very often so um as you shop around and as you plan out your home style I hope that you keep all of these things in mind and especially the earthiness piece because I do think it's important and so thank you so much for watching this if you made it to this point hopefully I was interesting or entertaining you in some capacity invest your time in your home and you don't have to invest a ton of money there are so many ways to thrift to be inspired by high-end designers and find alternatives for yourself by just taking the time to explore around so I don't know I just feel strongly about home decor right now and I'm so grateful that I took the time to apply all the things that I've talked about in this video so it's really worked for me and again I'm just sharing my experience on this channel that's all I'm here to do so hopefully it was helpful to you and I'm excited to see you all in my next video